knee to knee. Why not the one of her as a child, as a me, as a me, as a me, as a, from the first click, as a me, from the first blink, me, as a smile, sweet as a rip roaring me, as shiny blue, as a, from the first frame, me, as a, you are all there, in jaunt, in comfortable knees apart, body bowl you as a world opens to make room with fat breath, offers a hollow place which you roll, fierce shine into, smile. Why not the one of her starting to write herself? Where she shines simply too trippity bright. Do not think, do not think, think not of not speaking. Think only of where skin on skin is utter ease, where I fill my own frame with a smile and a kingfisher on my hand. You kneel to draw in sand, yield to make room for her as a girl. As a her, as a her, as a white dress flickering, with no thought of worth, as a her starting to stretch change shape, pulling her hem over her knee. Why not the one of her as knee holly? Culpepper's plant of Mars, being of a gallant cleansing and opening quality, the decoction of the root made with wine openeth obstructions, provoketh urine, helpeth to expel gravel and the stone, the strangury and women's courses. Has she begun to flow? Why not the one of her learning her stretch? She is on her knees, pleating her flesh to hide her flesh, tucking herself inside her bruise. I curate a quieter me as a thin, uncertain me. As a, as a, mutilate and deform my own language, lang, languga, languglug. You are fine steel under a high load, elastic up to the point of yield. We are two knees. As grain in rock. We write. We write. And write we did. And uh, we started by looking at what had been written about us, how he had, how we had been stated. And we dug out our old school reports, which are a very good source of found uh, material. And uh, in the book, we use these uh, comments, these, these writings about us um, as juxtapositions, as jumping off points, as counterpoints, as resistance points. Um, so this next poem is called School Report. School Report. She looks happy enough, seems to have settled in. It's become a bit of a habit pinning rosy circles to each cheek, a face fastened with a flinch. The point comes through if I try to smile, bristles against my tongue, makes eating difficult. She is always pleasant and helpful, however, rather quiet. I can see you can't see me. I don't know who lies behind and might benefit from a little loosening of this tight control she has of herself. Scratch and pull. Pull out a hair, one or two, scratch and carve. Blink, weep, blink, blink. She is too talkative. If only she were less argumentative and thus more cooperative. Masked with a beaked mouth choking through time, the back and underskin, returning me, eyeless, a Greek warrior, a bald rabbit, a talking oak, can't see me, a flash 
of iron claw. Her tendency to being obstinate still persists. Otherwise, a good term. And so, from our found text and from all the contradictions within our school reports, we realised that the more we wrote, the more we questioned the received wisdom and hence questioned even grammar, subject matter, how the syntax, work, work, syntax worked and started playing on the page with symbols and spaces to see what we might not need anymore. What can we discard? Let me decide where my edges start, whether or not I want a name or even species definition. ID, a white thing in a field, a dead sheep, a dropped tissue, a furrow puddle reflecting cloud. Let me be bored with a patch of daisies, plastic bag, school blouse, white thing in field, white field. And taking account of the impact of all those external messages upon ourselves and of the anger, that claw that rises within us and thinking about how we as women tend to press that anger down and inwards and squash it into so often into depression we had to write a poem about some of the darker places that that takes us to. So Rachel is going to read a poem that is simply called, Oh. Oh, to not have to do, to not stand up, to not this weight gathering in my skull with an addict's gleam is my tell. This need to sleep, perchance not to dream, to think, to feel, to weep, to wake, to rage, to plain against the grain, graft choice, harrow worth, but be a pool of nothing between trees. Soak into the soil, sink, solve. Day is coming close and the size of it, the girding up of it makes me envy babies off calendar with an easy engine a body wants. Day is coming close and the force of it the hard grasp of it crushes the sides of my face, dragging down my eyelids, stealing my jaw. In the swell of I don't want to think, truth louvers to fog, sucks me into the hollow of zero, better than fluoxetine, olanzapine, citalopram, diazepam, zopiclone, risperidone. Lull, lull me, oh, baptize me out of my life. Hand me yellow flowers as my head rolls onto the floor. And we didn't want to leave either ourselves or you in this first half with a duvet day. I think I might leave Rachel in the duvet day. So I'm going to read a poem called The Land Remembers, which is our antidote to all those feelings and is one of our retellings of the stories that we are told and have been told over centuries. The Land Remembers. It is the old story of the world with woman at the root. She squats in the belly of time, neither ruler nor prophet, breathing beyond her skin. 
There is a prescription of hair, eyes, build. Huh. Look in the mirror. There is the description. She upturns the jar, plants her own food, feeds her companion, speaks her mind. So the old story lays it at her feet. She's trigger, turning, chose the wrong colour, asked the blue question. You can be lustful with coriander or unwanting with curcumin. It is planted again, again. Shake the soil, heave the taproot. Here is cassava. You can be martyred with cinnabar or loyal with saffron. It is painted again, again on your tongue. Suck your teeth, flex the snake. Here is lime. When stripped down to we, the I, in a poverty of labels, we richness of being I, this I to this I, turn the world on its head. Begin a recipe of sky. Take a breath and tuck in its tail. Roll forward with you inside. Let yourself go roly-poly, dizzy downhill. Remember when we were allowed to change tack, to sling our stick in the yellow pond and go off. On the other side, a tiny bird. Wren, with churring exclamation. Yes, Wren's a feathered stone. A stone in river when light is right. Freckled. Body vibrates. Liquid tumbles silver coins. One day I shall own my hips. One day. I shall speak my own tongue, ratchet my wings. One day I shall roll. But meanwhile, all the stuff from the school report stays with the adult woman. All the stories, all the words from society, from our parents, from other people stay with us. And we wonder why we find things difficult sometimes. She still has her own brand of moodiness in her work, could easily have reached a much higher standard. She hasn't worn earrings for weeks, kneels in her cave, tearing perforated paper, all those little commas with momentary tales. She still lacks confidence in her own abilities, could easily have reached a much higher standard. This next poem is called Aware, and uh, it looks at how much we carry um, a sort of straight jacket of expectations, which become our expectations. And this poem expresses our desire to just shrug those off Aware is an extensive needs analysis and now casting array based around a network of demand radars. Images at fine resolution are received by her systems at 30 second intervals. Each file is analysed, compressed and stored. Update frequency, continual, end time ongoing stop let me step off grid fall in slow motion towards the center of the earth and keep on falling unscrew my jaw to let out banshees whirligigs and bee swarms find again the measure of my voice within the spiral yaw let me stay curled inside this thought that's just begun stroking my nose, bunkered from radar reach and soundproofed. Let me love the red behind my lids. Stop. 
Let me bone sigh to my holding place, wait finding hollow, an orange in my palm as feather snugs into pinion, lean into the lightness rising from the ground, breathe in citrus smell of body living and living without my doing. The more we wrote, uh, the more we were amused and surprised at, at what um, started to come out. We began to drop uh, the self-censorship um, and we found that some of our work became really quite unseemly. Uh, so this next poem is one of the last that we wrote and, um, and we wrote it unusually for us. It was sort of quite a gallop. And uh, Elvia is going to read this because it's one of her favourites and it's called Unflinching. Unflinching. I pick up the mess I've made and arrange it over my shoulders. Gorgeous. A splotched shawl without blood blooms. Pin my hair tall with a knitting needle or shave it off and tattoo a fontanelle. Gorgeous. Spike my ears with gold stars for learning to count and repeat after you, stretching each hole with weighty capitals, and take myself, gorgeous, downtown. Lamenting lack of knives, I ghost smooth-skinned dolls, trail fairy lights and vitals, and sticky, feathered, scrawled in italics, haunting. Throw me salt. I breach the golden ratio, leak pomegranate seeds, step outside brackets, emboldened. Starving, feed me protein. I dream of knives, my darling sharps that split the bone. I, my knives, speak as the unflinching robin that tears the worm in two, craving. Offer me sacrifice, my sweetest, tamest me, in her perpetual subscript. I strike her through, and as she dies, I lick her eyes shut, revolting. Swallow me, poison, that I may spew happy endings, skewer pronouns that agree with their antecedents and still say, she, red breast, gorgeous. So I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> um, and um, our last poem is our longest poem. And we both love it to bits because it is probably the poem that sums up our collaboration our friendship, the work we've done, the way we write, uh, our process, and also friendship in general, friendship amongst women. Yes, it's it's a really, it's a sort of love poem. Yeah. Back to back. In the diagram of us, we are here, disc and nub, Sponge and knuckle. Words resonate through shoulder blades, roll into ribs, breathe backwards to the heart. Ha! <sighs> we listen through our skin, tuning through bone and muscle. Unapologetic, we feel the ridges of a scar, ask about the wound. We shiver where we do not touch, Mourn the incapacity of arms to soothe, hugging our knees, shell comforted. Shh. Back to back, there is no edge, but intersection. A brief burn, our long selves curl around our separate bowls, nodding above glass bellies. We run a finger around the rim, sing secrets that reverberate a distant yes. 
back to back, bearing the scrape of stony contact, we navigate new coastlines, trace the arc and dip of self, fathom silted stories, unmap coordinates, throw soul authorship over the side and skip her by, how do we? Diving with our poet gills, we slow our breath as memories press upon our lungs, trusting that we are enough to flow into perturbations of emptiness, filling our pockets with backwater. It's impossible to ask too much, be better than, tie up all the space, go too far. We are a cross knot of cormorant wings, Lifting long black fingers, sea heavy, drip, 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 we unpick our grammar, stretch without shame. So what if we are asking for pleasure, admit to violence? We come to us to be made honest, to relocate through the energy of leverage, enlist spines in a counter language, a collaboration of bruises. Face to face, we would be bothered by mirrors and the noise of sympathy of trying so hard to understand and be everything. Back to back, we have not screamed a face, space, but breathe a rune between us, alive to spelling ourselves in flesh, blood, bone. How scared we were to ask our bodies to flex. We had been lightning conductors for shame. We urgently want to tell, increase the weight of weather, resist the narrative, disturb the data as it tails into our music, change the length of time, allow sadness, want it more beautiful. Listening in to death, we shawl the unexplained for warmth, dream the beginning, back to back, compassion, companion, Thigh muscles begin to engage. We are here. We are here. There is lightness and lifting all the way up.